Welcome to my very first YouTube video. Now, this is straight off the cuff. I've just written this up on the board, but the purpose of this video is to help you within five to 10 minutes, try to get your head around some fundamental things that you need to be doing in the gym to build muscle and build strength. Starting at the top, movement patterns. So squat, hinge, push, pull. These are fundamental movements that your body needs to be able to do. And when we train all of these fundamental movement patterns and all the different variations that we can use, then this enables us to build full body strength, train all the muscle groups of the body in equal amounts. Underneath here, we have some of the muscles involved in red. Hopefully you can read that in red, this does not include all of the muscles that may be active or working in any particular exercise. However, this is just an overview of some of the main muscle groups that we may use in that movement pattern. Then we have specific exercises. So I'm gonna talk you through this step by step. And then underneath, we're gonna take a look at the order that you might do these things in, the sets, the reps, how you can think about structuring your training across the week. Movement patterns, squat, hinge, push, pull. These are not the only movement patterns that we can do. Down here in the corner, hopefully you can read that. I've also written lunge, rotation, gait, and carry. Some people may not class these as fundamental movement patterns, all of these. However, in my opinion, if we are able to do all of these things, squat, hinge, push, pull, lunge, rotation, gait, carry. We are strong, fit, and healthy. Lunge, most people know what a lunge is. This is like a dynamic moving forward or to the side, moving onto one leg, striding one way or the other. Rotation, we need to be able to rotate through your torso. So we train the muscles of the core and the lower back to rotate. Gait pattern, this is your walk or your run pattern. And then carry, we can carry things in a number of ways to train the hips and the spine to be stronger. Now, if we take a look at the squat, let's start here. Squat movement, the main muscle groups involved when you do a squat movement, quadriceps, so front of your thighs, glutes, your butt cheeks, they perform the hip extension component. And adductors, we may use some of the inside of the thighs when we do a squat, depending on the variation that we use. Exercises that we may use for a squat pattern. Goblet squat, this is where we're gonna hold the dumbbell in front. Nice, easy, beginner squat variation exercise. Then we can maybe take a look if we are working a squat movement or the muscles involved in a squat movement, we can take a look at an assistance exercise, which may be a machine seated leg extension where we isolate that movement at the knee to train the quads. Moving on to hinge. A hinge motion is where we break at the hips, okay? And this is predominantly going to be more of a hamstring and glute biased movement pattern. We may also choose variations that load up the spine muscles, so the lower back muscles, because we can strengthen those muscles through things like deadlifts. So if we take a look at some specific exercises, we may perform, for a hinge movement pattern, we may perform an RDL, which is a Romanian deadlift. So this involves a shift back through the hips to stretch out those hamstrings, load up the glutes and then extend the hips back into that standing position. Predominantly hamstrings and glutes, and we may work the lower back, as I said. If we look at a Romanian deadlift, an assistance exercise for this could be a seated leg curl. So again, machine exercise, seated isolation exercise to train similar muscles and assist in our ability to perform a stronger Romanian deadlift. Another variation, very common with the ladies, a hip thrust. So this is a bit more specifically targeting the glutes, but again, another hip hinge movement pattern that we can start to think about when we work out what should I be doing today in the gym. Moving on to 
push. Now, when we push something, whether it's horizontally or vertically, so we can do things like chest presses, shoulder presses, this is a push pattern movement. Now, when we train a push pattern, we may use the chest, so the pecs. We may use the deltoids, the front and the side of your deltoids, so the shoulders. We may also use triceps, so we need to extend the arm generally when we're pushing, so that is going to involve the triceps. Some other muscles we may use, your serratus anterior are involved in that push pattern, so these are underneath your armpit around the side of your rib cage. Now when we look at exercises, as I said, we can do chest press movements. That may be lying on a flat bench, a dumbbell chest press. We can do a dumbbell shoulder press. Again, so vertical and horizontal push pattern exercises. Then when we look at an assistance exercise for the push pattern, we may want to strengthen the triceps. So tricep rope extensions where we extend the arm and we work on the triceps. Moving across into the pull pattern movement, examples of some muscle groups that we may train when we do a pull pattern movement, the lats, okay, these are your big wing shaped muscles, the V taper down your back, traps, most people know the traps help you with this shrugging motion, but your traps also have different segments a little bit further through your back, down to your mid-back. Rhomboids, again, thinking about shoulder retraction. And then we have biceps, so biceps are going to be involved if we do a chin-up, for example, or a pull-up, or even a dumbbell row, the biceps are flexing the elbow as we pull, as we go through that pulling motion, we use the biceps. And then again, sometimes depending on the exact variation type of exercise you are performing, you may have an exercise that challenges the rear deltoids a little bit more. So that is gonna be when we get the arm back behind the body to challenge the rear part of the deltoid muscles in the shoulder. With a pull pattern, we can train a pull-up, which is a vertical plane movement. I'm pulling myself up in this vertical plane. We may perform a cable row, so a seated cable row, where we pull in a horizontal plane. And then again, we have an assistance exercise, which is a bicep curl, so biceps flexing the elbow. Now, why am I telling you all of this? When we understand that these fundamental movement patterns enable you to train all of the muscles throughout the body, we start to realize the importance of not neglecting any specific movement and we can create a balanced, strong physique, minimize injuries and generally perform better in the gym. If we move across to starting to think about actually walking in the gym and implementing these movement patterns, thinking of specific exercises and orders, and perhaps even going as far as reps and sets that you may perform. I'm gonna run you through an example here. So, many of my clients will train full body workouts, okay? That means that we may do all of these movement patterns in one single session, or alternatively, we may even go one step further and start to split into upper and lower body parts, or we may do entire push or pull focused days where we specifically train on all the muscles involved in the push pattern or the pull pattern or even squat or hinge days. We can do entire days devoted to this. However, typically most people are short on time and you will benefit much more from training full body workouts that include all of these fundamental movement patterns. So if we were to start, for example, exercise one, we choose a squat based movement. We may choose a goblet squat or a barbell squat or a Smith machine squat. Again, just plugging in examples of squat based movements to demonstrate. We may do a squat based movement for four sets 
of five reps, okay? First of all, we're gonna work on strength, and for that reason, we are generally gonna be trying to use heavier loads, lower rep ranges, so we get that strength component trained in the gym. We then may move in exercise two into an assistance exercise for, it could be an assistance exercise for a squat, which may be a leg extension. So directly training the quads in a machine with a machine leg extension. Alternatively, this assistance exercise could be to assist with another main movement. So it could be a leg curl. So again, we're still working the muscles around the thigh and it is simply an assistance exercise or something that assists with one of your other major movement patterns. We may perform that for more of a muscle building stimulus and therefore we may choose to go slightly higher reps and really focus on contractions, range of motion and doing some good quality work to assist in whatever it is that we chose first in our workout. Moving on to push and pull. Depending how much time you have, we may choose just one push movement. We may choose a push and a pull. We may even superset and do together one push, rest for one minute, do one pull exercise. We may do three sets, eight to 12 reps. Again here, these are just generic examples. However, you will not go far wrong if you follow this type of principle and programming when you step in the gym. Then lastly, it may be that we want to throw in a assistance exercise for either your push or your pull movement. And that could be, as I mentioned earlier, a rope, tricep extension, a bicep curl. We may even do both, depending again on the time that you are devoting to your session. So as an example, one squat based movement, it may be a barbell squat, four sets, five reps. Then we go to an assistance exercise. That may be an assistance for your hip hinge motion. So it could be a leg curl. It could be a leg extension. So either way, hamstrings or quadriceps trained for your assistance exercise. Three sets of 12 reps. Generally, we can then focus a little bit more on good quality muscle contractions and range of motion and putting ourselves in machines that give us stability to really get a good output from a specific muscle. We then may go into a push and or pull movement. So we could then move into a dumbbell chest press. If I had time, I may do also a pull up or if I was to keep my push and pull movements horizontal for that day, then dumbbell chest press and a dumbbell and a cable row would have me moving push and pull in this plane of motion. And then next going into the assistance exercise, which again could be something like a rope, a rope tricep extension or a dumbbell bicep curl. Just examples, but this should get you thinking about structure and moving from one exercise and movement pattern to another with more of a methodical and thought out approach to your training. Everything that we're talking about today does depend on your experience level, how much time you have to devote in the gym, your frequency, so how many days are you going to the gym? How much of this can we split across the week? Do we need to do all of these things in one day, two days, three days? Can we start to divide them up more specifically and focus more on body parts versus movement patterns. These are all things to consider that are unique to you, your time availability and your schedule. However, let's say you have some extra time, you've done these four, five, maybe six exercises, you may wanna throw in something at the end as a finisher, some conditioning, or just some extra work, perhaps if you have a weaker body part or something that you just wanna put more work into at the end of your session. We may add in an extra. It could be something from one of the additional movement patterns that we mentioned down here. Lunge, rotation, gait, carry. We may want to throw in a form of conditioning to 
end the session with a bit of a sweat finisher, that could be something as simple as a 10 minute AMRAP, as many reps as possible with 10 calorie ski or row or bike, straight into 10 crunches. And the goal with an AMRAP is as many rounds or reps as possible within a set period of time. So if you had 10 minutes, you may choose something just to start conditioning yourself to the rest of the work that you need to be doing. And whatever you choose there is entirely up to you. Depends if you have anything specific that you are looking to progress with. Alternatively, it could just be another variation of exercises from the ones that I have showed you in blue across the middle. Hopefully you could read that. Hopefully you could follow along. If you have any questions or any comments, please do drop a comment below and please subscribe to the channel. If you would like me to make more videos like this, maybe even answer any specific questions that you guys have, I would love to make more content and my goal is to help you really work out what you are doing in the gym so that you can improve your training, become fitter, healthier, happier and stronger and know what you are doing every time you step in the gym. So to wrap this up, thank you for watching my very first YouTube video and I hope to see you back in the next one.